Hi, I'm Glenn from the Wells Vehicle Electronics Technical Services Department. And I'm Jeremy from the Catalog Department. And what we're going to talk to you today is some similarities and differences between intermittent duty starter solenoids and continuous duty solenoids. Uh, Glenn, what would you say is the most common call you get on, on, on starter solenoids? Well, by far the most common call we get is uh, concerning the wiring of a solenoid. Um, now, typically uh, when somebody takes, goes to replace a solenoid, they take the wiring off. Oftentimes they get confused as to how to make the connections to that solenoid. Um, the positive battery cable should be attached to one large post on the solenoid and the load, uh, the starter itself, uh, should be attached to the other large post. Uh, that starter cable should be alone, no other wires attached. If there are any other smaller fusible link wires, those all go on the positive battery cable side of that solenoid. Okay. Um, let's talk about the difference between intermittent duty and continuous duty. Now the F-492 really common Ford solenoid is an intermittent duty. Um, what is the difference between an intermittent duty solenoid and a continuous duty solenoid? Well, the, even though those solenoids look very similar, the differences are uh, in the way they're manufactured. Um, a continuous duty solenoid is a, a little more robust internally. It's designed to operate for longer periods of time where a starter solenoid is only intended to be used for short periods of time to run a starter motor. Okay, so if you see that it says it's an intermittent duty solenoid, you only want to use it for a starter, correct? Right. Any long-term use of that solenoid would cause it to overheat and possibly fail prematurely. Okay, as long as we're talking about the F-492, uh, a lot of calls we get too when, when the old solenoid gets taken out, there's only three terminals. This one has four. What do you do with that fourth terminal? Yeah, that's a good, uh, a good point there. Um, when you replace a three-post solenoid with a four-post, that I terminal is typically just not used. Um, the uh, S terminal is the control circuit, in which case that type of solenoid needs to have the base grounded. It completes the primary circuit through grounding of the base. Okay, so that is a grounded base one. Right. Okay, and now let's, let's go with, the, uh, with these style solenoids. There's, um, all three of these look very similar. Um, they are all different in one way, shape, or form, though. If the F-490 is an intermittent duty grounded base, the F-498 is an intermittent duty insulated base, and then the SS-1126 is a continuous duty insulated base. So basically, you've got these three solenoids that if you look at the outside, they're all very similar, but then what we will do is we'll go over kind of the differences on the inside. Now, the F-490, like I said, is a grounded base. So if we'll look at the diagram of, the, of a grounded base solenoid, go, why don't you go ahead and then explain this, Glenn? Yeah, to make that solenoid operate, you supply power to the S terminal, and the mounting bracket has to be securely grounded to the vehicle to make its path back to battery negative to complete that primary circuit. On an insulated base solenoid, um, the two small terminals are used to power the solenoid, to activate the solenoid. So the insulated base does not need to be mounted to uh, clean metal or anything, it can just be... No, in fact, on some applications, it's actually mounted to a, a plastic inner fender panel or something like that. But once again, it uses the two small uh, terminals, the S and the I terminal, to activate the solenoid. Okay, now, will we ever have any amperage ratings on intermittent duty solenoids for starters? No, and that's a good one. Uh, that's another common question that we get is, uh, amperage ratings for any given uh, solenoid part number. Uh, if there's no amperage rating listed, that is typically a starter solenoid. Uh, if there's an amperage rating, then it would be considered a continuous duty solenoid in yeah. most cases. Yeah, and if you go on our website, wellsve.com, and go to the specialty application search tab, basically you can look at the continuous duty solenoids and see the amperage, the voltage, because we will have some 24 and 36 volt solenoids as well. All that information will be on the website. Um, and as well, you can actually uh, contact our 800 number too, 1-800-558-9770, and prompt one will get you in by Glenn, and prompt two will get you in the cataloging, and we can answer any questions um, over the phone as well. Um, another one that we recommend a lot as far as a continuous duty for winches, plow, stuff like that, is part number U1453. Um, this one, it's got kind of a wide range of, of uses. Uh, it's an insulated base, 
uh, continuous duty. So that's a pretty common one that we recommend when doing something in regards to a plow or something like that. Yeah, that's a, a real common number for uh, heavy duty applications. Uh, like you said, plows, winches, lift gates, things like that. Um, but that is a, a heavy duty, in, uh, continuous duty solenoid. Okay, well I think that's about all we've got today. Yeah, yeah. that should about wrap it up for solenoids for yeah. today. And once again, I'm Glenn. And I'm Jeremy. And we hope to see you again next time for Wells Counterpoint Live.